Today we're out here at the Florida National Panther Refuge. And what I'm gonna be doing is, you know, just doing a little bit of orchid research. We're focusing on the ghost orchid specifically. The ghost orchid is the most recognized native orchid in North America. It only grows in the spookiest parts of North America in the southern Florida swamps, if you will. And where there's shaded alligators, there's uh, cottonmouth moccasins. It's, it's a place not many people really long to go into. Well, Florida was a very different experience for me. I wasn't field proven yet. And so it was really fun to actually go out and get field experience where we're out in the swamps. We're up to our thighs in water look, looking for ghost orchids. If you see this ghost orchid, if you smell it, especially toward nightfall when, when it's getting dark but the flowers are white, it locks you in. To see the ghost and flower, like I, I thought, you know, over the course of being here for 30 plus days, I'm going to see at least one or two in flower. But the very first day that we get out there into the swamp to see one in flower, like chest height right in front of me, I'm not submerged in two feet of water, it's just right there and it's in flower, it was like, wow. It's like, all right, this is cool. You know, I've never really been around epiphytes, don't really know how this thing works, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to figure out what this thing's doing here and how we can help it out. So what we did this summer is we brought in the top Cuban ghost orchid expert. Dr. Zettler has told me so much about Dr. Mujica, Dr. Ernesto Mujica, I should say. I started reading some of his work, you know, his, his literature that he's put out. And he knows ghost orchids. He can find these things when they're tiny plants on trees. I could rely on some of my Spanish to help fill in any gaps. And I felt like it really helped the research to go smoothly when I was working with Ernesto, the Cuban researcher. And he started his work in July with my two students, and when he left at the end of July, they documented more than 100 more. There's evidence that it was grown at Illinois College because it has a tag that says Illinois College. So these are Illinois College homegrown orchids that have been reintroduced. Yeah. Look, they're flowering, and they've got fruits on them. So obviously there's pollination happening here. This is good. When I was sitting on the airplane in Orlando and I looked out the window on the, on the tarmac and I saw a pond and I looked and saw invasive plants on the, in the pond and, and those are plant and animal species that don't belong, are not native and they encroach and they push out our native species. And I turned my head and I saw that and I thought, I can't sit in my home state and see the ecology of it go down and free from my very eyes. I was really bothered by that. I, I grew up in Florida, I lived there 22 years. I remember as a little boy seeing plants and animals that I grew up with and when I go back now I don't see them anymore because they're, they're gone. These are endangered species, critically endangered species, some of these. And here in our science building we have a USDA quarantine level 2 facility that gives us the permit to work in the lab with students on fungi that grow these orchids. And, and you never believe it, but here in the middle of the cornfields is this lab in the Parker Science Building, hidden away. And if you look inside, the, you would see a student there at work. And some of the rarest orchids in the world are being grown. <laughs> 